Hi, I'm Dr. Srikantha Jethi, consultant, pediatric pulmonology, interventional pulmonology, and sleep medicine, Asta Arvi Group of Hospitals, Bangalore. Today, I'm going to talk about asthma in children. Asthma in children, for most of the parents, is a myth, and most of them consider, how can my child have asthma? Will my child ever have asthma? If my child has asthma, is it for love, lifelong? So there are lots of questions and concerns that parents have. And I think it's right time that we all decide and discuss about how and why and when this happens. So if you're a resident of Bangalore, you would have seen that the incidence of asthma has increased. Say, when we were children, say in 1980s and 1990s, the number of children who had asthma was minuscule. But now the numbers have tripled or quadrupled in just 20 years. So why is it? Why is it increasing? Is this genetic? Is this environmental? Or there are any other factors that we need to consider? So before moving to that, let us discuss what is asthma. So in simple terms, uh, asthma is a heterogeneous disease. So it says it all, heterogeneous. Heterogeneous means it's not one. It has multiple facets to it. So we've had parents coming with, uh, but both the parents having asthma, whereas the children not having anything. Whereas parents have not had any episodes of wheezing or sneezing, yet children have severe wheezing and sneezing. So that itself tells you it's heterogeneous. And we should document a, airflow obstruction that means there is V's and in V's what do you mean by V's? V's is a musical note when we breathe out but can we diagnose V's in every child? No. So just capsulating asthma is a heterogeneous disease it has to be associated with a V's that is airflow obstruction which is variable and gets better with either nebulization or inhaler. So we also were discussing about how and when. So one, now that we are reasonably okay with the concept of asthma, I'm going to tell you how children usually present with. So A, children only present with cough. That is 90 to 95% of children only have cough. So a lot of parents would go to pediatricians and get some suspensions or tablets and go back home. You give the medications, child gets better, again comes back with the same cough. That is what we are talking about. Any child comes with persistent night cough, persistent daytime cough, exercise induced cough. Exercise induced cough in a small child is different to exercise induced cough in a bigger one. Exercise in a small child can be crying and coughing, laughing and coughing, and most importantly, whenever they get excited, they start coughing, is exercise induced. Whereas in an older child, when he's able to run and do any sport, he starts getting breathless, he starts having significant amount of chest tightness that is called as exercise induced bronchospasm. So any child and every child who comes to us with nighttime cough, daytime cough, exercise induced cough at least once a week, it's already called as uncontrolled asthma. And any child who has persistent cough, uh, that is nighttime, daytime and exercise induced for more than three days a week, it's already called as persistent, either mild or moderate or severe, depending on number of days between three to five, five to seven, seven uh, or equal to seven. So children coming to us will only come with cough. Only 5% of them come with breathlessness, we, which land up in emergency department. If parents ask us, is that what is considered asthma? No. Asthma is nothing but persistent cough. And most importantly, if your child has persistent cough or recurrent cough, cough which lasts for more than two to three weeks despite medication and cough which comes back after stopping the medication has to be looked into as a possibility of asthma. So coming to diagnosis, diagnosis of asthma is purely clinical. So I have to spend time with you guys to ask about current history, ask about past history, ask about family history. In the starting of the topic I asked, parents have but children do not have, whereas children have and parents, uh, uh, parents have. So there are a lot of ifs and buts there. But genetic component is extremely important. Genetics have show, been shown to be one of the most important factors for development of asthma. If a mother has, there is 70% chances. If a father has, there's 50% chances. And now we are talking about epigenetics. That is, if grandfather has, the genetics can be transferred to their grandsons without having to 
pass through the parents so there are a lot of reasons and that is the reason why we call it as heterogeneous and last but not the least we also talk about environment during the first uh, introduction i told you about why the incidence of asthma is worsening in bangalore it is probably because of a genetics at the same time environment wherever we see there is construction wherever we see there is some or the other thing that is going on and anything and everything is going to be a harbinger for children developing asthma so we take a detailed environmental history from woolen stuff to fluffy stuff which have a lot of house dust mites to lot of uh, uh, fungus in the fungus on the walls to lot of soft toys carpets that we use without no understanding carpets also can lead to allergies pet specifically cats hamsters these days ham hamsters as well as lot of other pets are in a uh, lot of uh, uh, vibe now apart from that there are lot of other things which causes pollution and well as allergens and most importantly of all of them 80% of them is because of construction roads being dug there's a lot of dust dust comes inside your house settles what accounts to only 10% of what we see but 80 to 90% is not seen by a naked eye so anything and everything that is there in and around her are the reasons for us to develop asthma so this is all i had to tell you about asthma and most importantly Uh, what you need to understand is in older children we also do lung function tests and lung function tests are of different types and there are ways to analyze what is the child allergic to and depending on that move forward so all these are carried out in aster rv hospitals and if any of your child or any of your relatives have persistent or recurrent coughs which are getting better with medications but again coming back with similar problems do come visit us we'll help you out